Thanks for staying with us this morning. We're at uh, Agri Solutions over in Atchison. We're joined by uh, Mike. Uh, it's good to see you, Mike. It's Great to be here, Brian. Thank you. Uh, most farmers, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Uh, we're talking about wheat guys now. Looks like a great crop, but there's always issues that go along with having a great crop. Exactly, unfortunately so. From what I've gathered, yeah, the uh, scouts out looking at the crop say it's going to be a big wheat crop, but if we look at the markets, we know what that has caused. So, yeah, from a crop insurance perspective, you know, we kind of sit here and start thinking already about uh, with prices coming down, the possibility of looking at revenue claims, even though we have good yields out there. So our base price for wheat, this year was five dollars twenty cents. Now we're trading in that four fifty range, so that increases guaranteed yields about fifteen percent for producers out there. So that's something you want to watch if you do have some yields that are maybe on the edge. Your guarantees are about fifteen percent higher than than thought they were going into the season. Well, what about quality? Because quality could be an issue as we've gotten a lot of moisture the last couple of weeks. Yes, that's another thing too, especially on the eastern side of the state. Here, I know a lot of moisture here this spring some kind of cold damp conditions we always get start to worry about quality issues on wheat we dealt with that a lot last year so uh, if this continues we may run into the same type of issues on the wheat crop this year uh, i would just encourage producers the biggest thing on that is to stay in touch with their agent make sure they keep them up to date with what they're finding uh, if you do start to find uh, mycotoxin type issues make sure you contact your agent because you more than likely need to uh, get a sample whether it's delivered to the elevator or put in a bin, you need to get a sample before you dump that grain so that we can use that to test for those mycotoxins and, and make sure we get you paid that reduction in quality. Well, not only that, I mean, the weather's been so freaky this year. Um, what about hell? I mean, we haven't gotten a lot of it, but we always need that coverage just and, in case. Yes, and there have been pockets. I think we had a client in one area that got hail about five times in a couple of days. So there's been a little bit of it here and there. And yeah, and that's another thing you start to worry about with wheat is have a good crop out there, we get closer to harvest, it's more and more susceptible to hail and we're right in that season for that. So uh, now the challenge with producers is with wheat prices the way they are, there's not a lot of margin there. And so it's difficult to look at spending that kind of money to put that coverage in place. So, so I would encourage producers to talk to your agent. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. As an independent agent, we work with a bunch of different companies and can find some very competitive hail rates. And, in a year like this, when margins are thin, that can make a big difference in what you view as affordable to get that coverage in place. Not only margins are thin, but everything is thin. I mean, coming in from last year, and, and I'm sure crop insurance is one of those things that people are negotiating this year with you guys quite a bit about. Yeah, to an extent. You know, we're lucky that, that the basic crop insurance, I think most producers and bankers look at as indispensable. Um, and that's with the subsidy levels that are in it and everything, that there's a very good case to be made for that. Like I said, you get into some things where sometimes you want to skimp and not spend those extra few dollars on hail insurance and things like that, which may be a prudent decision, but you're also exposing yourself to that risk of having damage out there and not having it covered. Perfect. You know? We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to finish up with Mike Shear over at Agro Solutions. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Thanks for staying with us this morning. We're over at Agri Solutions over in Atchison. We're joined by uh, Mike Shear. So, Mike, again, thanks for staying with us this Thank morning. Thank you. Um, again, it's one of those deals where we need moisture. Sometimes we get a little too much moisture, and we're talking about... Uh, delayed planting, maybe we've got some replants and some other stuff going on. Exactly, yeah, and those conditions can sure change quick. It seems like just about a month ago, uh, had some clients that were worried about planting corn because it was too dry. We're thinking about waiting and it hasn't stopped raining since, so here we are. It's starting to eerily feel a little bit like last year. So, so yeah, I start to get into issues thinking about, uh, you know, crop, crop issues with what is planted, standing in water, cold, damp conditions, and then, of course, what's not planted. So, uh, you know, I think in general around the area, vast majority of the corn crop is in and planted. So that's a plus. Uh, 
hopefully it looks good, mm -hmm. has its head above water. If you do see some issues out there, again, make sure you contact your agent as soon as you think you might have to replant so that they can get it inspected. And then when it dries up and you're ready to hit the field, you've got everything done. You don't need to be waiting on an ingester, okay? Um, you know, there are some beans in the ground, certainly, uh, but a lot left to plant, so. And we still have some time. Final plant dates on beans in Kansas range from June 15th all the way up to June 30th. So still a pretty big window here to get them in the ground, but you start to realize that a few well-timed rains and we could be to June 15th before you know it. So, so again, you know, if you have some issues with beans that are planted, stay in touch with your agent. Um, stay on top of your options as we approach those final plant dates regarding preventive planting. You know, we ended up having a lot of clients last year that had to take preventive planting on beans. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not ideal, but uh, in a year like we talked about before when margins are thin, sometimes that can be a way better option than being out there trying to plant beans on July the 5th, you know, depending on where you're at. So, so you have to watch real close and ma make sure you're making a prudent business decision there. Or returning 100 bags of beans. Exactly, yes. And those are the kind of things you have to investigate. You know, you have to figure out from your seed dealer, what are my options? Can I return this seed or am I stuck with it? Uh, those all affect those decisions and that's things that, you know, we try to help our customers work through as, as best as we can because there's a lot that goes into it and it's, it's a different situation for every producer because of that too. Well, and last year I, I know I talked to several guys who got stuck with several bags yeah. of beans, hundreds yeah. of bags of beans, and yes. they're just kind of stuck setting on them. Exactly, yes. Talked to a client just the other day that planted some of those already this year. So hopefully that, that works out. Uh, hell damage, uh, hell insurance for those, and we got uh, just about 30 seconds left here, but hell for those, get with your agent on that. Yeah, stuff. again, you know, we talked a little bit about the wheat. You know, if, if you get a crop planted, it gets up, it's looking good. Uh, hail and wind type coverage on corn is something to think about. Uh, as I mentioned before, Try to talk to an agent who works with different companies so they can find the best rates and coverage in your areas. There can be a, an amazingly huge difference between premium rates uh, across companies with hail. It's kind of shocking, really. So it's worth doing some investigating to save yourself some money. And we want to remind everybody of your website. Yes, www.ag-risk-solutions.com. Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you, Brian. Thank you.